Oh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up tool changing in the DCS menu. So prior to this, uh, if you don't know how to create a user model um, or attach things to a Cartesian position check, you probably want to go back and look at those videos first. Um, so let's get started. So right away, I have two different user models that I've set up on my robot. So I'm not physically going to be changing my end of arm tools at this point. I am just going to be doing my user models in DCS, um, just so that we can see that function inside of DCS and know how to do that. So first thing we got to do is you set up those user models for each of your tools. So this could be two different tools that the robot's using. Um, you know, maybe you have a material handling and arm tool, and maybe that robot's also MIG welding or adhesive or something you'd have two different physical tools that you would be changing um, on that robot or the other option is material handling is when you have a part in the end of arm tool versus when you don't have a part both applications they're going to be done roughly about the same way so I have uh, a sphere that I'm using for my end arm tool one and then the orange bubble here that is my line segment for user model 2. So first thing we're going to do is get inside of our pendant. So for this to work we got to make sure that we have two different tool frames. So if you haven't taught tool frames on those end of arm tools you need to do that. Um, but in RoboGuide it already applies it. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my DCS tool frame. So let's get to our DCS menu. We're going to come down to tool frame and I'm going to go ahead and type in my tool frame number that I taught. So this is going to make a standard FANUC tool frame into a DCS tool frame, meaning it's bringing that DCS or that uh, tool frame into the DCS menu for the data. So I applied tool frame one, tool frame two. So that's going to be for tool one and tool two. And then my user models that I'm setting up. So I used user model one for tool one, and I use user model two for tool two. So the next thing we have to set up is tell the robot, hey, we're going to be doing some tool changing. So where it says tool change here, we got to type in a negative one. And that's going to apply tool changing to the DCS uh, tool frame menu. So how we're going to be activating these tools uh, to be switching them back and forth is we're going to come over to these three dashed lines and we're going to use a safe internal relay to activate those. So I'm going to use safe internal relay one for tool one and model one. I'm going to use safe internal relay two for model two and tool two. So this is the setup for the DCS tool frame menu. So if you had a third or a fourth tool, you could come in, type the uh, tool frame number, and then the model number, new sir, and as many as you wish. As long as you have it set to negative one, you're good to go. So now that I have that in there, I am going to set up my safe IO connect. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to control sir one. So we're going to go and choose choice for our output. We're set sir one and we're going to equal it to our NSI that we previously set up in our last videos. So NSI, we're going to use NSI one so that we have this tied to a digital output um, starts on DO 150. So when DO 150 turns on, it then turns the NSI one on inside of our DCS menu, which then turns the sir one on, which then is going to apply the DCS tool frame and uh, user model one. Go ahead, set up my second sir here. So sir two equals NSI two. And then the last thing we have to do in this menu is we have to make this statement exclusive. So we don't have two DCS tool frames and user models active at the same time. So we're going to choose choice and we're going to make an and and then we're going to add not NSI2 over here. So 
So how I make this an inverse or a not statement is I go next to my and, and I'm going to choose my exclamation mark. I'm going to do the same thing for sir2, except I'm going to do it for not and si1. So now after I apply that, we should be able to see tool changing happen in our tool frame menu. So when you do this, you are going to get an alarm saying uh, a tool mismatch, and that's okay. Um, because whenever you set up the tool changing on the PLC side of things, um, whether you're using like an ATI lock and maybe an Adam and Eve switch or whatever to send that safety signal over, the uh, digital output reference there is going to be replaced with that specific safety sensor. So right now I have DCS tool mismatch because it really doesn't know what to do. And that's because I haven't applied anything or activated any of my signals. So I'm going to put this in double, and we're going to get down to DL150. And then we're going to pull up our DCS menu. We're going to go to our tool frame menu. So now when I turn on DL150, we should see this change. Ignore the zone right now. I have a, it being disabled on one of my other, um, or the CPC zone being disabled with a SIR. But the main thing is to be able to see this at symbol in here. That's how you know that you have it done right. If I turn this on, then we see it indexed down to two. So that is not going to be everything for tool changing, though. So the last thing that we have to do is get into our zone check, uh, Cartesian position check, and we have to enable the tool changing in there as well. So how we do this is we come down to target model and we're going to set this to tool change. So if you have any other user models or an R model um, that you know is going to be fixed there all the time, then you're going to want to add that in. But since I don't, I'm going to uh, disable that. Now I'm going to reapply that. So real quick, I'm going to take that sir out of there to disable. And that CPC is out. So apply it, we're going to cycle power. And then once we apply it to that uh, check function, you should be able to see that zone switching uh, with the user model. So tool changing is definitely um, a process that we're starting to see and have been seeing more of out in the field. Um, so knowing how to switch those tools is just going to make your robot safer and it's um, going to protect your equipment as well. So let's pull up my digital outputs here again. Number down to item 150. Now I'm going to pull up my DCS menu. Go into our CPC zone. And we should see those tools switching back and forth. So as I turn one on, we have user model and tool frame, uh, DCS tool frame one active. And then here's that alarm that I was telling you about, that DCS tool mismatch. Um, just shift and reset that, and that'll go away. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my other one, and we switch to our other user model there that we have set up. Now, by no means are my user models that I have set up uh, accurate. I put something in there so we could visually see the change, um, and it's, it's really easy to see. So one thing to remember with tool frames is the robot can only have one active tool frame at a time. So just because I'm switching DCS tool frames doesn't mean that I'm uh, switching my robot tool frame as well. So inside of my program, I'm still going to have to use the uTool equals uh, then your tool frame number instruction before you um, or whenever you switch your tool inside of your program. So we would switch it to two.